Let's do an example to illustrate how you use design factors. So this is an example from the book where it says we have a vertical round rod is to support a hanging weight. We'll go ahead and draw and it is going to be fixed at one end. So I'm just going to draw that here and I'm going to load it at the other end with some weight W. The person will place the weight on the end without dropping it. They're placing the weight on the end though, so we could have a dynamic loading event where the actual load could be twice the static load. The diameter of the bar is manufactured to within plus or minus 1%. So D plus or minus 1% is an important fact we want to keep in mind. The support ends can be centered to within 1.5% of the diameter. That's an interesting problem. So let me just put the diameter over here on the rod and let me draw a dashed line to represent the center of the rod. And we're going to note that load is offset from the center by plus or minus 1.5% of the diameter D. So we're gonna call that offset E for now. The weight is known to within plus or minus 2%. I'm gonna put that here right now, plus or minus 2%. And the strength of the material is known to within plus or minus 3.5%. So by strength in this case, we're gonna consider the yield strength. And we're gonna say that is known to within plus or minus 3.5%. The designer is using the nominal values of stress. So we wanna use a P over A value as the design load. So that is the design load we're going to apply. And we want to use the yield strength, calculate a factor of safety for us. So normally what we would do, if we knew everything precisely, we would say that the factor of safety would be given by the yield strength over the design allowable load. So this is kind of what we're looking for. But we have to consider the worst case scenario. So the first thing that I want to talk about is how this load W is offset from the center line. So what that means is about the built-in end up here, we have not only an axial load, but we also have a bending mode. So at the built-in end, we have axial, which is a P over A stress. That's our axial. And we have a bending stress, which is an M y over i term. So the total stress then that we are applying to it is the sum of the axial and the bending. So let's just go ahead and write that sigma total as p over a and we're going to add to that m y over i. And now we're going to use a couple of other things and that is that a is pi d squared over 4. y is d over 2, and the moment of inertia, pi d to the fourth over 64. So we're going to put all of that stuff up into our stress equation so that our total stress is 4p over pi d squared plus, what is the moment? The moment is p times e, which is the offset. It is occurring at d over 2 from the neutral axis, and we're dividing that by pi d to the fourth over 64. So we can simplify all of that. Sigma total is equal to 4p over pi d squared plus 32p times e over pi d cubed. Okay, so if we take the 4p over pi d squared out front, we get 1 plus 8e over d. So let's look at this again for a bit. What do we say that this E was equal to? All right, so what that means is that E is equal to 0.015 times D. So our total stress then is simply 4P over pi D squared, 1 plus 8 times 0.015. Well, that tells us 4P over pi D squared times 1.12. Okay, so what is this P? I'm talking about P. Well, P is just the applied axial load, and that applied axial load I'm going to replace with W. So I'm going to let my, uh, in a moment, I'm going to do, do some changes to the applied load. So P is the applied load at the end of the beam. Now, there's a couple of other things we know here. We have said that the diameter is known to plus or minus 1%. 
that the load is known to plus or minus 2%. So let's think about this for a minute. The worst case scenario on the load is if the load is larger than we think it is. So we said that P was known to plus or minus 2%, which means that the worst case load would be P times 1.02. Now, the other thing is there's a dynamic factor of 2 because we're slightly, you know, we're loading it. It's not quasi-static. We're not dropping it from any discernible height, but it still ends up with a dynamic loading factor. So that worst case load is going to be equal to twice that. So P times 2.04 is the worst case load. Now, the other thing that we don't know is that the diameter. The diameter has some uncertainty in it. So the uncertainty in the diameter is one plus or minus one percent times D. So the worst case is if it's smaller. So if D is equal to 0 0.99, D, then that's a worst case scenario because it's a smaller cross-sectional area which drives the stress up. So if we go back to this equation with the total stress uh, and we replace P by this 2.04 times P, so we end up with 4P 2.04, we multiply that by 1.12 and we divide that by pi d squared 0 0.99 squared simply because we replace d by 0.99 d and we get that the total stress is equal to 4p over pi d squared gives us 2.33 three times that. Right, now what we wanna do is we wanna take a ratio of this worst case load to our yield strength. And what do we say of our yield strength? So the worst case scenario is the nominal yield strength and we subtract 0.035 from it, which says that our yield strength, let's call it a prime now. Our primed yield strength is SY times 0.965. That's what this turns out to be. We want to take a ratio of our sigma total and our yield strength. So we end up with Sigma y prime over sigma total would be sy 0 0.965, and we divide that by 4p over pi d squared 2.33, and we find that our sy prime over sigma total is sy over 4p over pi d squared. This is all 0.414. Now, what are we going to make of that? Well, if you look carefully at this, this SY over 4P over pi D squared is the ratio of our material strength and our nominal design allowable. That is our axial stress. So this ratio is actually our design factor. We have that by 0.414. That is equal to our updated design factor. Well, if we just want the worst case scenario to just prevent failure, we let this equal to one, so that one over 0 0.414 is going to be our design factor. And that gives us 2.42, and there's our answer. So our design factor taking into account the variability in certain geometric and material properties of the actual design situation gives us a design factor of 2.42.